Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with a word from the Lord, and it is so important for us to, you know, look into his word daily for directions, look into his word daily for our sustenance. It is our map. It is our manual. It guides us into all truth. It guides us into those things that the Lord wants us to know. All right. But before we can get into all of that, we must first read it. We must read the word of God. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you today. Thank you for your love that has been shown to us another time. Oh God. We are here and we're here to praise and worship your name. We're here to look into your word. We're here to learn what you have for us to, today, oh God. So I ask you now to bless those who will join us and open their hearts, oh God, so that it may be receptive to the word of God. Lord, I thank you for taking charge of the airwaves so that your word can go forth without interruption and with power and might. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Now friends, we're talking about purpose today. We're talking about purpose. Uh, if most of us can look back on our lives, you know, some persons have already, well, embraced their purpose, but there are some who are still trying to figure out you know, what, what's their purpose? Um, why are they here? Why were they created? Why am I uh, running this race? What am I in it for? Who am I? All of those things. Because sometimes uh, persons end up wearing labels that the Lord never meant for them to wear. Sometimes others put labels on them and they end up walking that way instead of God's way and what God's will and desire is for them. So just a quick, quick, quick definition. What is purpose? Purpose in its simplest form or in its simplest definition is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. All right. It, it is the reason for why you exist and if you are going about in life and you still say that I do not know my purpose, then it means you have to go back to your creator. Because remember, only the creator knows why something was created. In this case, only our God knows why he created each of us. He has placed something in us. It doesn't matter how similar we are in personality. There are some things that he created individuals to do. And that's what we should pursue. That's what we should try to find out and walk in that. Because when you're walking in purpose, you will get a level of fulfillment. Is it always easy? To walk in purpose? No, of course not. But you will have a passion. You will know when you're walking in your purpose. You will know that this is what you were created for because you will go about it with a, a level of passion. It's like even though it's hard at times, you feel the drive to continue. Like I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm walking in my purpose because this type of, you know, activity where you uh, commit yourself to sharing God's word. It can become tedious. It can become a bit tiring. But when you know that that's what you were created for, you're driven by that. So I don't see it as a burden. You understand? I don't see it as something that I just don't want to do anymore. I am driven to do this by the spirit of God. So I know that I'm walking in the way that he has created me. It's like I am in the perfect will of God for my life at this stage of my life. 
You understand? All right, let's look into the word because, you know, we before getting too far, we want to see what God says about us. Now, I selected Jeremiah because Jeremiah is such an interesting character. Now, I didn't even uh, pick him because he's a prophet or he was a prophet, right? Uh, Jeremiah's life sort of embodies <laughs> purpose and, you know, pushing through passionately, even when there are difficulties. Now, in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, it simply says, and this is the Lord, the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord that speaks to Jeremiah. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. All right? Now, before each of us was born, before we were even conceived, the Lord knew exactly what he wanted us to be. And he, he he's all-knowing. So he has given, you know, his word over your life long before you were born. So remember that the Lord, he created or he created a lot with the word from his mouth. When he said, let there be, you know, and he said, let there be light, let there be this, let there be that. But then he created man, he formed man from the dust of the earth. And then, of course, he formed woman from the man. All right. So the Lord is not a haphazard God. He's very intentional. He's very purposeful. Right. When he's creating us. So we have to understand who we are in God. That before we were even born, the Lord knew exactly what he wanted us to be, who he wanted us to be. And it's for us now to walk in that. And then in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So the Lord knows our beginning and he knows our end. Now, there are some things that happen in between that if the Lord had showed us some of this beforehand, we would not want to maybe take on the journey ahead. So what the Lord in his wisdom, in his wisdom and divine providence, he just allows us to live day by day. But from time to time, he will send his word to our lives to give us direction. And that's why it's so important for us to read the word so that we can know who we are in God. And when we know who we are, even as children of God, we will not become intimidated or frightened by the devil. We will not become intimidated or frightened when, when you know, the demons start to lash out against our lives in the form of people. All right. For example, in Psalm 139, 14, it declares, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. No, there are times when persons are made to feel as if they're nobodies by another person who God created. And this is, ki this is kind of weird to me. It's strange to me because each of us has been fearfully and wonderfully made in God fearfully and wonderfully made so they, no one person has the right to discount or discredit you know what's in somebody else because each of us has been fearfully and wonderfully made so from time to time you will you will find persons who tell somebody else that they're ugly or they tell them that you know, they look for some feature on their body to describe and tell them your nose too big, you know, your ears too small, you know, something don't look right about you. And then even in families at times, you would have children who are born to the same parents. And for some reason, this one looks like maybe another relative or whatever, and they look different. And depending on how they look 
physically, they're treated differently. And that is why you have some families, some children, they grow up with low self-esteem because they were listening to the labels that somebody else placed on them. And some of the labels are very cruel very cruel so you have persons who are not sure of themselves they're not sure who they are because they heard so many negative things while growing up about who they who others think they are what they could become what they could do and what they could not do there are some people who were told that you were you would never amount to anything there are some children that came about because of unplanned circumstances and because of that they feel that hate even from they were in the womb and what some parents do not understand is that your negative emotions and your negative vibes filters into the child the unborn child that is something that can be scientifically proven so for those who believe in science and you know when the the, the bible says certain things and they don't believe it right they say well well that one can be proven by science that unborn children babies in the womb are affected by their mother's emotion by the things that they actually hear while they're in the womb so people believe that you know because it's at a certain stage there's you know there's no way that that child can be affected but oh how we are wrong and then the bible says that we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity so that is why even from a child is born and they get to a certain stage in life certain things just come naturally for them right sometimes you look at a child and you say hmm you know, because we, we say babies come into the world, imp, you, you know, they're impressionable. Anything they see, they do, and so on. And yes, they do learn some bad habits. They pick up some bad stuff. And sometimes people ask, how is it that that child knows that thing? Because they were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So it is some things will just come normal even as they progress. But... It is our duty and responsibility as adults, you know, to nurture children in the way they should, should, should go and help them with their esteem, help them with their self-esteem. Because I'm telling you, some of these same children that grew up hearing certain negative things, they are the ones that grow up at times to become problems in the society because of the labels that were placed on them. Some parents call their children dogs, some mothers because they were affected by you know how they were treated by the father of the child they tell that child you'll be just like your father or you're just like your father things like that and the children hear these things and they grow up with certain issues and problems because of what they heard when they were children and you know growing up if it's one thing i give god thanks for my great grandmother i will consider her maybe one of the greatest motivational speakers ever but, you know, in, in those days, because persons only had a certain level of education, they were not seen as anybody. They were, you know, shunned. I remember my, my great grandmother sharing with us that, you know, growing up in her community and as she started to have her children, you know, people would look at her and look at her family and they would say things like, all this, all your children will ever be able to do is certain types of work now they were discounting you know work uh, uh hard labor right you know when you you labored with your hands like you labored in the field or you had to be a domestic helper to help somebody in their house and that was spoken over like her children like that's all they would ever be able to do and while there is nothing wrong with hard work it just goes to show you that some people they have certain ideas about certain things and because of that my great grandmother and and you know god may the lord <laughs> continue to rest her soul she would say to us as grandchildren and great grandchildren because it's like there was something inside of her that knew that there was more there was more that you know people can achieve more and she would always say to us look here you can become anything that you put your mind to you can become anybody that you want to become in God and she would encourage her grandchildren and great-grandchildren in that way and when I was young I, I didn't understand much you know of what she was really saying but as I got older 
I realized what my great grandmother was trying to tell us. She was trying to motivate us to do our best in life and do it in God. She would remind us regularly that we are nothing without God. You understand? We're nothing without God. So I'm saying as we mature, as we grow, we function sometimes in those things that we hear, in those things that others have told us. If all we have heard is negative stuff, then we're going to walk in that way. We're going to walk in that road because that's all we know. You understand? That's why you have some people, they're so shy and withdrawn. They have giftings in them. They have a lot of talents in them, but they don't want to put it forward because they're afraid that people will mock them or they would laugh at them. And back to Jeremiah, Jeremiah can tell you about being mocked. Jeremiah can tell us about being scorned. Jeremiah got so discouraged one time that he told God, you have deceived me. In other words, Lord, you have tricked me. You never tell me that this road was going to be so hard. And that's why we have to make up our minds that when we're walking in purpose, we're doing it because it is what God placed inside of us. And he will help us along the way, regardless of who thinks that we're ugly or who thinks that we're too loud or we're too this or we're too that. We can never ever please everybody. It doesn't matter what you do in life. You will never please everybody and we have to stop allowing the enemy to keep us back from doing what god has ordained us to do because you know somebody doesn't like it you understand i understand that you function in life through social graces you function in life through manners my great grandmother grandparents parents used to say manners takes you throughout the world and i didn't get it right because i'm like can you go on a bus and, you know, <laughs> tell the, the conductor, uh, good morning. And then that would pay your fare to where you're going. Well, sometimes it did. So I got the context in which they were speaking. You know, that our attitude determines our altitude. I get all of that. All of that is good teaching because we need to have great attitudes, you know, positive attitudes that would take us through the world. But I'm telling you, there are some mean and ugly hearted people who they specialize in putting others down. And the Lord is saying today, it's time to rise up and walk in the purpose to which I have called you. All right. It's time to rise up and walk in those things to which I've called you throughout, you know, maybe this week we will continue on certain aspects of this. But let me just touch on something here. There's a time sometimes even in the body of Christ. When you know that you know that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord has called you to certain things. So what he has done, he has placed you in a particular church or under a particular covering. And that's great. We need training and mentorship in our lives. We need authority in our lives. We need someone to be accountable to. We need to be trained. We need to grow up with godly wisdom and, and etiquette. You understand? We need all of that. But then sometimes you have some scenarios where the very people that you're, you're, you're placed under for mentorship and leadership, the most negative things come from them. And you have to understand when to cut and move away from that sort of environment because it's keeping a lot of people bound in the body of Christ where sometimes the very same people who release you into ministry, they are the most jealous, the most envious, the most covetous, right? I'm, I'm not asking you this. I'm telling you something that I know and they go against your life and they fight you and they try to keep you down. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, you would be stunted in your growth for him. You understand? So it is not just a situation where you grew up in a family or you know, around negative people that try to keep you down. If you're not careful, it will happen to you even in the very church. So you have to be so, so in tune with God. You have to listen to his voice. You have, you have to understand when he's speaking to you. And when he says, look, you stay right there because I am training you. I'm training you to go through hardships. So you don't want to jump out of the oven half-baked. 
You understand? And that is why some persons continue to even stay in situations because the Lord is teaching them. He's showing them how not to be when they move on. You understand? He's teaching. He's mentoring through his word. And he's saying, look, take a note of that. But I don't want, you know, when you are shifted from this environment that you practice those things. And I see it at times where persons will come out of certain oppressing and depressing environments and they swear or they promise never to do it to others. And they're doing the same thing. You know why? Because that spirit is on them and they need deliverance from that. So we don't want to keep a a, a bad cycle being being carried along when the Lord is saying, let that go and come into the purpose to which I have called you. It's not going to be easy, but it's doable. You understand? The Lord is with us and he is the one that makes all things possible in our lives because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The enemy will always try to fight our purpose. He will. He will fight your purpose. He will, you know, cause armies to rise up against you, to keep you like in a particular state where you, you're crippled for God. You cannot do anything for God because you don't feel like you're worthy. You don't feel like you're able if you try to launch out and do something, there are sometimes people that rise up, right? Demonic activity rises up against you to shut you down because the devil does not want the things of God to go forward. So we have to be so careful that we're not allowing people or their ideas to keep us bound and we're not walking in God's purpose for our lives. So this day, all right, on this day, this fifth day of November, 2018, make up your minds, friends, that you're going to walk in that purpose that God has for you, knowing that you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made, knowing that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, all right, who strengthens you. Your strength comes from God. He's your source. He's your source. So walk in that, walk in that way that he has set before you. Do not sit on the background anymore, waiting for somebody to validate you. All right. Validation is good. Confirmation is good. All of that is great. But if you're sitting in the background, waiting for somebody to give you a title before you can walk in purpose, you're late. If you're going to sit down waiting for somebody to give you some post or some position, you know, that causes you to feel like somebody, you're late because each of us as children of God has been given a great commandment and that is to go into all the world, right? Preaching the gospel. But before we can go into the world and preach, yes, we need some training. Some need training, yes. And that's where the word of God comes in. And that's where being planted under somebody who can mentor you comes in. So we need that. I'm just saying, once you get to that level that you can now go out and do God's work, don't sit back anymore waiting to be told what to do. Take some initiative and go on out, launch out into the deep and do God's work. It's not all the time that you're going to get the blessing of the person who was over you because I'm telling you there are some jealous and wicked leaders they will not give you their blessing whenever it's time to be for you to be kicked out of the nest they're gonna find some sort of reason why they think you're not ready no I'm not talking about God fearing people who are filled with integrity and walking in it because I personally I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm walking under godly leadership, godly authority. I have that in my life and I give God thanks. I thank him for my pastor, his wife and the other leaders in the church that I attend because we're all there together mentoring and we're being taught the word and how to function 
in the world and carry out God's purpose. One of the things that our pastor taught us, he said that our church is a spiritually gifted sending church. So he trains us and then he sends us out. He prays for us. He gives us his blessing and said, go do the work of God. You understand? That's the type of leadership we need. And that's why I pray for them every day. Because you don't have a lot of leaders like that. You have a lot of insecure leaders. Insecure. They're afraid to launch, you know, to let the people go and do God's work. They're afraid that the person will, I guess, become more popular than them. Those are the types of foolishness that insecure leaders think about. So they try to hold their people down. So you have persons sitting in churches with all types of titles, doing nothing, nothing, just a title, just to make the church look good. A bunch of ministers, they don't teach, they don't preach, they're not given opportunity to do anything. Just sit there. And once in a blue moon or once every month, you see everybody come all, you know, choked up. I learned that from, <laughs> I learned that from someone recently. You know, come sitting around in color doing nothing. What is that? And so many people are out there dying, waiting on the manifestation of the people of God. Waiting for you to come and say to them, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He's calling you. Well, if persons are sitting around in churches waiting for their pastors to give them the go ahead to do that, I tell you, they're late. Go on out there. Win the lost. Meet the people where they are. Get out of the four corners of the church and meet the people where they are. Some people will never come into our church doors, at least not the way we have been operating, because they're on the outside looking in and they don't like what they're seeing. All right. So if we sit up in a church waiting for people to come, we're inviting people to church. And if they don't come, you're vexed. That's foolishness. Go on out to the highways and the byways and compel people to come in. All right. What I'm here doing, so many people can do that. Take up your phone, do a video, encourage somebody. You have the Lord laid something on your heart. You have a testimony. Put it out there. Because the word of God says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Testify of God's goodness and see how you would draw people into the kingdom. Because when people realize that they're not in this struggle alone, then they understand that, hey, if God do it for that person, surely he can do it for me. So there are so many ways that you can utilize your purpose Walk in your purpose for God. Do the thing for which you were created. Don't try to be like anybody else. You go on out there and be what God says. Some people sing the song, I know who I am. And some people don't have a clue who they are. They don't. They're walking in power, working miracles, live a life of favor. I know who I am. Some people are singing that song and they're going home and crying after that song because they really don't know who they are. And they're asking the Lord, who am I? Well, you have to turn to God's word to know who you are and who he has called you to be. What are those things that you're passionate about? What are, what, you know, sometimes they say that your misery becomes your ministry. What are the things that, that bother you, that you know that you can make a difference in? What are the areas we're not called all in the same things? We all have different gifts and talents. And if we allow God to show us the way, he will use us. And once he starts to do that, then we must remain humble. We cannot become puffed up and arrogant and prideful. But you must walk in godly confidence. Sometimes godly confidence looks like arrogance. But people know the difference. When you are sure of who you are in God, it can look like arrogance. It really can. Because there are people who do not understand you. So they try to shut you down. So you have to have that spirit of discernment in operation in you. So that when negative words come, you just let them go through one ear and go through the other one. Don't let it settle in your spirit to break you down. 
because I've been writing about the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit comes to choke you. It's just like the python. The python, it, it constricts you. It, it, it wants to squeeze the life out of you. So there are times when you're walking in purpose and these evil spirits attack you in an effort to shut you down. But I'm declaring today that once you get through that gate, and you're walking in purpose. No demon from the pit of hell will be able to shut you down. No demon. They will fight. All right? They will fight. But once you are wearing that whole armor of God, you will be defended against the wiles of the enemy. And most importantly, God is fighting for you. So don't be afraid. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness, right? Spiritual wickedness in this world. So we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So that is why the Lord says that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We are not fighting this war with physical weapons like guns and knives and stones, rocks. No, no. We're fighting back with prayer. We're fighting back with fasting. We're fighting back with living a godly life. That's another weapon. Holiness. Walking in holiness. Walking uprightly. Walking without reproach. If you want to get on the devil's nerves, do what God says. Be obedient to God. If you want to frustrate the devil, live right. Yes, live right. When he expects you to react to something that he has done, let the response, because there's a difference between reaction and response, all right? Let the response be a godly one and see if you don't frustrate him back to the pit where he came from. And that's why a lot of people sometimes who allow the devil to use them, they become frustrated when you're walking in your purpose. You know, they try to fight you. And they operate in these spirits that try to hold people down and hold them back. But I'm here to declare to you today that whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. Don't let them use your past to hold you back. A lot of people, they're famous for that. They love to throw your past in your face as if that makes you disqualified from doing the work of God. Well, the devil lie. He lie, he lie, he lie, he lie. The devil is a liar. You rise up from out of the ashes and you do what God says. Walk in purpose. Hold your head up. Not in, in pride and arrogance, but hold your head up. Have some self-esteem about you, right? Think highly about God. Think highly about others. Think highly about yourself. Because if some of these people thought highly about even themselves, not more highly than they ought to think, because I'm telling you, everything in God's, is in God's word. But if a lot of these people who love to put people down would think a little better, even about their own selves, they would not have time to be putting others down, telling people about they're ugly and they're this and they're that. Right? No! Kingdom people do not put others down, especially when they see them making an effort to walk in their purpose. And that's how you know some people are demonic because they don't speak anything positive about others. They only have negative words. And you see, some of this started from how they were trained up, right? They were abused. Somebody hurt them. And that is why they don't have anything positive to say, but they need deliverance. Because that cycle has to be broken. It is said that hurt people hurt people. And that's true. It's true. Sometimes some people are so hurt that they hurt others. I've been there. I know. I know what I'm talking about. Man, there were times when I was so hurt. The Lord is healing me now. So let me be the first to admit that. Listen, I would lash out left, right, and center. I'm telling you, I'm being honest. You know, I try to be transparent. I'm not perfect. No, I'm not little Miss Perfect trying to tell everybody else what to do, but she cannot get her own life straight. Oh yes, that's what people say all the time. But I can tell you about my personal struggles with that. When you become sick and tired 
of people putting you down and you know first of all i'm not even talking about people just criticize because you can't stop people from talking about you right no you can't because some people don't love themselves so they will not love you so i get that but what i'm talking about is the deliberate attempt to just kill your purpose and i used to lash out and say i see you but I, I used to see the people, not the demon that's operating inside of them. So I didn't know how to pray and how to go to war against these type of things. And then I learned because you see, all of that was a part of my training. The Lord kept sending me around the same mountain again and again and again so that he could teach me some valuable lessons. You understand? So I'm not here now trying to encourage you to do this and I've never done it and I've never been there. None of that is true. I'm speaking like this because I know, been through some stuff so that I can help others to come through. Still going through, all of us, not arrived. I have not arrived. Some of us believe we have, but I me know I'm not reach yet. I'm not reach nowhere yet. But every day I trust God to continue, you know, to work on me, all right? Some people don't want to admit that they're hurt. So they're bitter and resentful and angry and they put negative stuff out there towards people. I'm talking even about people in the church, church brothers and sisters. Angry, don't have anything good to say about anybody and they don't see anything wrong with that. You understand? But these are the things that prevent us from walking in purpose. So God is calling us this day to walk in purpose. Work in, walk in his divine will and destiny for your life. Where you're not angry anymore to the point where you cannot function in God. Because some people are angry and hurt and they don't want to get involved. That's the other thing. They don't want to get involved in what God is doing because, you know, somebody hurt them. Somebody told them that they can't sing. Somebody told them that you're no teacher. Somebody told them something that crushed their spirit. And because of that, they just want to sit in the background and do nothing. And I'm telling you, people of God, that's a demon from the pit of hell that has come to crush you. Do not allow it to happen. Rise up and pray. Fight back with the word. That's what Jesus did when the, the devil came to him in the wilderness. The, when the devil come and telling him this and that, the Lord said, it is written. So if we don't read God's word, we won't know what is written. And we will be weak because we don't know the word. You understand? We have to know the word. It, it, regardless of what your purpose is, you must know God's word so that you will have a weapon in your hand at all times. Okay, so when they tell you that you're ugly, you draw for Psalms 139, 14. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You understand? You must know who you are in God. And don't let the devil muzzle you and keep you down and keep you back and keep you bound. So you go for years sitting in a church building, not knowing who you are or what your purpose is. No. Enough is enough. Let today be a day of decision where you rise up and you say, God, I am ready. We sing songs, Lord, I'm available to you. My will. You know, no, if we're going to be available to God, then we have to show ourselves available and ready. Don't just say it. Start reading God's word. If, if, he, if you know the Lord is going to use you to be a, a pastor or something, start studying right? You, you, it's not everybody going to get the chance to go to Bible school, but start doing something that helps you in your purpose. Passion alone will not do it. You're going to need some training. So get in God's word. Go to conferences and events that help to build you. You don't have to wait for your pastor to extend an invitation. Something is happening. Go to your pastor um, you know, I want the Lord to build me in this area. So such and such is happening. Sir, ma'am, just letting you know, I would like to go. 
And if they tell you, you can't go ask them who I paid the fear. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right. You all, you all know my heart, right? My God, I'm just saying you have to build yourself in God and towards your purpose. Don't just sit down and expect things to fall in your lap. You must get up. Right. And move towards that. Don't sit back anymore in a church or in a ministry or wherever waiting for somebody to come and, and knight you. No. Rise up. Communicate. Let them know where the Lord is leading you. And if they cannot mentor and train you, then move on. For me, it's that simple. Move on. Because it does not make sense you're sitting around as dead weight. Dead weight because you, you, you're not walking in purpose. Right? You don't want to weigh a ministry down because you're not doing anything. No. Get involved. Do what God says. Difficult times will come. Yes, there will continue to be people who put others down. Remember what I told you. Those people do not love themselves. Whenever you see people being negative and they're talking negatively about others, remember what I told you this day. They do not love themselves. Something or someone hurt them and they need deliverance from that. Because I don't understand how people can just get up every day and be negative. No, something wrong. Something is wrong with that picture. That's not normal. It's not. All right? So don't worry about naysayers and negative people. They need God too. Right? Because they will tell you how much you need God, but they don't understand that they need God too. So let us walk in purpose today. Let us do what God says. Remembering that the Lord ordained you right from before you were in your mother's womb that's a long time so it's time to rise up and walk in that walk in what god says not the labels that people try to place on your life all right i'll leave that there for today and i just want to pray pray for somebody because it is time we're living in perilous times now and it's time for us as people of god to rise up and do what God says. Stop sitting on the sidelines, watching, wondering, waiting. If you are hurt, ask the Lord to help you. Ask him to heal you. He can. I'm telling you, he's doing it for me. He can do it for you. He can. He can. And he will. If we allow him. All right? If we allow him. Some people have been battered. I remember saying to someone recently that, you know, there was a time in my life where I was damaged, damaged, damaged goods had to be nursed back to health physically and spiritually. So that's why it's so important that you understand where you are. Right. Where you are, which organization you're in, what is happening to your life being in that place. Is it progressing in God or are you digressing? Are you, you know, getting lower and lower in spirit? No. When you see that start to happen, my friends, something is wrong. Go to God and let him direct you. All right. Go to the Lord and let him direct you because you cannot sit on the side anymore. There are people that I know, that I know very well, who, you know, you want to say that, oh, I remember when they were powerful in ministry. They were, and now I look at some of these people and they're like mouse, a little mouse, hardly saying anything, hardly doing anything because somebody crushed them and they are under that crushing still. Like they're unable to rise up out of the ashes. Well, I'm going to pray today and I'm going to pray and I want you to share this because I want people to understand that the Lord has given them a purpose from before they were formed in their mother's womb and they must walk in that. Now is the time. All right, let's pray. Father, I give you praise today. I magnify your name, O God, because you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. There is none one, no one above you, O God, and there is none like you. So Lord, today 
I bring us, your people before you, O God, who you are calling at this time to walk in divine purpose, to walk in your way. I pray, O God, that those who are under the influence of demonic powers that's causing them not to rise up, O God, I pray that you will cause those powers to disintegrate from their lives. You will do damage, O oh God, to those powers, those evil powers that are trying to keep your people back, trying to keep them down and trying to keep them bound. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power that you have given us in our mouth, cause us, O oh God, to rise up and use our words to change our world. And we will say no more. Enough is enough to the enemy. We will rise up and we will walk in purpose. We will walk in that area, O oh God, that you have set us to do. There is a work that you have given each of us, O oh God, and we will walk in that work. We will walk in purpose. We will not be down and out anymore. We'll be, we will not remain knocked down, but we will rise up from out of the ashes and we will go forward in you, O oh God. We will rise up and do that which you have commanded us to do. No longer will your people be fearful because you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. Lord, we will walk in that power. We will walk in love and we will walk in a sound mind where we can think for ourselves. Oh God, and we will not be thinking through others or allowing people's thoughts to guide us. When you have said to us that you have given each of us a sound mind. So help us, oh God, to think and grow in you, Lord. I, th I thank you, Father, because you're already transforming lives in this hour. There are many who have made up their minds that they're going to live for you, oh God, no matter what comes their way. So Lord, I thank you for the boldness and the strength that you're placing on your people right now to walk in that way that you have set before them. They will not be cowards. Because, Lord, your word says that we are more than conquerors through Christ. We are champions. We are victorious. We're not victims, oh God. We are victors. And we will walk in that. We will walk in the truth of your word. We will read your word and know who we are in you because of what your word says, not what a man has said about us. Lord, we will walk according to your will and to your way. We will obey your voice. We will listen to you and we'll do exactly what you have commanded us to do, O oh God. Because now is the time. Now is the time that you're calling us to rise up. So Lord, I thank you today. I thank you, mighty God. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. No longer will the adversary have dominion over our lives. No longer, O oh God. Will we do according to what he has commanded? But we will turn the thing around and we will listen to your voice. And we will do, oh God, exactly as you have commanded. So Father, today, bless that person that thinks that they are a nobody. Cause them to rise up, oh God, and understand who they are. Because your word tells us exactly who we are. Lord, cause people who are shy to rise up from out of their shell so that they can do exploits for you. Mighty God, now is the time. So Lord, I thank you. You're doing a new thing in the lives of your people and we will embrace it. We will embrace it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. So friends, it's purpose time, all right? It's time to walk in purpose no more excuses. No more excuses. If you think that you have gotten to a stage where you don't know where else or what else to do, pray. Seek the Lord. Ask him. Okay? Ask him. Ask the Lord. Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, I feel dry. I feel stressed out. I feel depressed. I feel like I can't go on. Right? Most of that is oppression of the enemy. But you go to God. And you allow him to direct you. You allow him to lift you up and build you. He has given us the Holy Spirit as our helper. Okay? Don't just have Holy Spirit there like that. Follow him. He's a teacher. 
Okay, so may the Lord bless you today, friends, all of you. All right, Yolande, good morning to you, all of you. Rosetta, Sister Francine, good morning. Fashion, all of you, good morning to you. God bless you. Suzette, Kembra, Calvia, Patricia, good morning to you. All right, good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Marion. Marion, good morning. Man, you are far away, but you're here. Thank God for technology. Charmaine, Simone. Yes, Simone, I see you today. Sister Florencia, good morning. Sharonda, all of you, good morning to you. Sonia, may the Lord bless you today. May the Lord bless you, Stacy, Alvara, Juliet. Good morning, Latoya. Good morning, Charnette, my sister over there in Virgin Garda, Marvin. Good morning, all of you, friends, Cindy, right? Sister Cartwright, <laughs> I like your name, <laughs> right? Fiona, may the Lord bless you today, all right? Tammy, well, Miss Divine, <laughs> Tammy, Chandra, all right? So the Lord bless you today as you continue in your work for him. Sister Angela from the Bahamas, Bahamas in the house. Good morning, sis. Good morning. Miss you all. Miss you all. Lily, good morning. And may the Lord just bless you today and continue to use your life and cause you to walk in purpose. It doesn't matter what others think about you. Just hold your head up and do what God says. Because if you consider too much, you know, what people think. I mean, you care about your life and you want to please God. But once you know that your heart is clean you know towards god and towards people you don't have anything to worry about let them talk all right that is a a, a phrase that we we got years ago that is still so applicable let them talk in jamaica we have a, a thing that says you know it, it's what they call it nine day talk help me out now simone and suzette it's a nine day talk something like that where they will talk about you for now until the next new thing comes about so don't worry. People are fickle. Don't allow what others are saying to stop you from walking in purpose. If I had followed people, I would not be on here this morning. Honestly, I would be somewhere sleeping, you know, in my bed and just relaxing if I had followed people. But I realized that it's not even them. It's those demonic powers that are trying to shut you down and shut you up. So the Lord has already shown me what that is. So I, I, am, I will not allow the devil to discourage me. Never. So I will frustrate him in just doing what God says. All right. So it's time for you to do that, friend. Some of you are already walking in purpose. But, you know, there is always more. And even me, I am saying, Lord, there is so much more. Give me more. I want more. I want to be closer. I want to know you. You understand? I want to know you more. So friends, may the Lord bless you today. Have a powerful week. Walk on that job this week with your head held high. If you work from home like me, just encourage somebody. Encourage somebody to walk in their purpose. To walk according to the will and plan of God. You may not have all the answers, but they're there in the Bible. Point them to God's word. Encourage them. You know, build up. Let's build up one another. We're not going to tear each other down. Just build up. If we don't have anything positive or good to say, don't say anything. Some of us forget some of those little things. Because some of what we say, we believe it's hidden. But then it comes out. And then people know that you do not regard them in a certain way. And they avoid you. And that's what the devil wants. So that's why people, you know, some people don't bother to go to church or whatever. Because they have been hurt. They have been hurt and they, they feel that, you know. And sometimes people say, oh, well, you're serving man or you're serving God. Let me tell you, sometimes that's very insensitive to say. Because some people have no idea the hell that some others put some people through. And if it wasn't God on their side, they would just simply die from depression. You understand? So I'm wrapping up, you know, but the Lord is just speaking and saying, let us just encourage and build up one another. Build up one another because it is the right thing to do. If somebody comes to you and they're trying to pull a sister or a brother down, run them. 
that's why some people don't deal with me you know honestly I, I man I don't even want to go there some people don't like me because they say I'm too plain I'm, I'm too you know I'm too too that's their problem I am trying my best to be obedient to God and if you come in my circle and in my space with foolishness I'm going to dismiss you so if you don't want if you don't like me for that that's fine I'm good okay I'm confident in in who I am in God I don't need somebody to come and pat me on the shoulder and tell me it's good to be affirmed I get it I you know people love that they thrive on it but I don't let that become my problem because the same people who pat you on the shoulder today they turn and go around the corner well not even today this morning go around the corner and they start to say all sorts of foolishness the same people so I do not live my life based on others opinion I don't allow people's praises to swell my head because I'm telling you people are fallible so that's where I'm coming from so you live for God and you be a warrior for God. Don't, don't mind people. I'm on it because a lot of people are allowing people to stop them. They're going to talk. Let them talk, man. Let them talk till they're tired or till they fall asleep, drop out or some other thing happen that shut them up for good. But you can't stop people from talking. So let's shake ourselves and get out of this thing where I don't want to function for God because. Okay? All right, I done now. I promise you, I done. <laughs> so sorry to keep you back, but may the Lord bless you, my friends. I, I love people so much that I want to see each of us do well. And if a fellow brother or sister is coming to me with derogatory things, come on, man, start to send them back and say, go, go on to the brother, go on to the sister. Tell them how you feel and end the foolishness and stop with this. Uh, unending conflict this this quarrel that just can't done it's nonsense foolishness in the body of christ can't done and they keep adding more people to it you know it's nonsense let's stop it man each of us have been gifted differently all right some people believe that they're the only this or the only that in a church so because they're a prolific teacher they believe they're the only one so anybody else who the Lord rises up, they become jealous. Start to talk a bunch of nonsense about the people that they don't know. You understand? I'm speaking because I know. I know how it is. So friends, rise up. Rise up. R just rise up. Let the Lord exalt you. Right? And while he does that, he will do that if only if you are humble. So when you see the Lord elevating people and it's the Lord now, not man, it's based on their humility because the Lord said he resists the proud, right? But he gives grace to the humble. So nobody will be able to stop you when the Lord starts to elevate you and open doors for you. Some of you are not even asking even for the doors that are being opened, but it's because of the God that's in you. And when that happens, oh, if you think they were jealous before, check when the doors are being opened. So that's why the Lord is trying to toughen you up at this level where you ignore negativity and you just push forward for him. Okay? All right. I really don't know. This is like those sermons that have five closings. Well, I'm done. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Good morning, Harriet. I see you there. God bless you, my dear. And you just hang in there for God. Okay, don't let anything cause you to turn back on God. God not do you nothing. He loves you. And all he wants to do is to bring you into his purpose. All right? So you walk in that and let God do the rest. He will take care of your enemies. He will take care of those who are trying to pull you down. He will. I'm a living testimony. So you hang in there. Have a blessed week, powerful week, and see you again on another live. See you, hear you, whatever it is. <laughs> All right? Take care.